Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's Monday's Boring Objects. Monday's Boring Objects. Yeah. So, my name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and Vinny's ears are pricking up because I've opened a window only because the door's closed and it gets a little bit stuffy in here having the door closed is because I'm trying to stop him from barking but having a window open means then he's more likely to bark so uh, but I need air flowing man you know need a bit of air in here to do. Oh, my website is jasonnewland.com brilliant resource where you can download thousands of recordings and um, yeah it's a really good place all my well not all of my stuff but a lot of my archive recordings are on there I'm still working on it still working on the YouTube channel as well so I'm on YouTube as well and if you'd like to be part of the Facebook group, it's Jason Newland's Boring Group. It's a private group, but we just ask to join and you will be joined, <laughs> if that makes sense. <sighs> so, this is Monday's Boring Objects. So, last week I did tea bags talk about tea bagging and tea bags and stuff so this week we're going to talk or I'm going to talk about reusable carrier bags reusable carrier bags wow I can I can I can sense the excitement <laughs> quivering in your knees just I can, yeah, reusable tea bags. No, not reusable tea bags. Reusable bl carrier bags. That was the second most popular choice. Uh, what I'm probably going to do next week is put another poll out because I accidentally deleted a couple of them. S or I might just, I might just go through all the ones that were mentioned when I asked last week and do all of them and then then ask for some more yeah that might be easier so what I'll do actually I'll tell you who voted for this one so you know who to blame <laughs> Ooh. let's have a look oh, let's have a little look uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what? What's my name? Oh, yes, yes, it. Jason Newland's boring group. Just got to go down a little bit. Oh, itchy, itchy back. Down, 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 down. Right. So I asked the question. Reusable tea bags, so t no reusable shopping bags. I keep saying tea bags. Uh, all different types of glue, the bins, wellies, leftover change, and money, elastic bands. But there were others. So I did tea bags last week. The people that have voted for this one was Christine, Ben. Cindy, Diana, and Robin. So the ones last week was Samantha, Sky, Tina, Sarah, Ruth, Chris. So thank you for your recommendations. And if you'd like, make a bit no no no. If you would like to be part of the excitement. That is Monday's Boring Objects. 
and help me to choose a subject to talk about, then just join the group, Jason Newlang's Boring Group. Did it say sound like I said Jason Newlang's Lang? That'd be Jason Newlang. That'd be quite a good name, actually. Jason Newland. So, uh, today is Monday, the uh, 23rd of September. It's 10 to 7 in the evening. Haven't been the most productive today. I've done a few things. I made some videos for YouTube. The editing took quite a long time this morning. So I woke up about four o'clock. It took till about half six to have all the editing and processing and all that stuff done. So it was quite a... I don't know why it took so long. It's just... I just did. I think I kept falling asleep while I was doing it, to be fair. It was, I got up too early. Although, I had been in bed since early, so I didn't have, not like I had a late night. But I just, sometimes, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Sometimes just, uh, and it's, it, it is a little bit, not the most exciting thing, editing. Really. Especially when you're listening to me. Imagine listening to me. But then editing through it. To make sure that it's. You know. His. The main thing really. Is his barking to be out of it. And. Any particular weird sounds. You know. So there's some like really strange sounds outside. Uh, any, anything like that. Uh, I got my camera back on my front door and my neighbour downstairs has got their camera back as well because we had some weird stuff happening in the in the building again. Um, a puddle of urine was downstairs. Uh, what else? I had my toilet roll stolen from my doorstep. There was... Yes, there's just a few strange things happening, so... The cameras are back, so at least my camera kind of covers the whole of the landing, really. So, you know, if anything, if even if someone like came up to the camera to sort of steal the camera, I'd see them come in and I'd have them, I'd have them on video, even if they ran off with the camera, I'd still have it on video who it was, so they can't really get away with it. I mean, my neighbour downstairs, she's got a, a video of someone urinating against the front door. Not her front door, but the communal doors. Her, fil her camera just filmed it. And this was like two o'clock in the morning. This is months and months ago. I know who it was as well. <laughs> it's just like, I really did want to see that. I know the person that's like, this is like, uh, anyway, let's not talk about that. <sighs> Got a bit dry mouth, I have to have a, have a drink. I'm very tired, I'm having one of those, I'm one of those tired days. One of those, what am I doing, why am I doing it days kind of. One of those, uh, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's the weather. I woke up to torrential rain. And I still haven't got a brolly. I need to, I need to get a new brolly. I'm just sort of saving, saving up for an umbrella. Ella, Ella, Ella. It's just, I need to... There's a certain probably I want to get that is okay. The, the, I don't think there's any such thing as a real windproof brolly. They might say they're windproof, 
but I've never met one that was windproof, not like really windproof. In fact, I'm becoming less windproof. Ever since I kind of lost a little bit of weight, I've noticed that I'm not quite as, well, obviously I'm not as heavy, and the wind perhaps not can sway me, but I can feel it a little bit more. And I, I noticed I'm feeling the cold a little bit more as well because I've got less blubber on me. I was walking around like a walrus last year. The teeth and everything. And now, I mean, I'm not, it's not like I've lost a huge amount of weight. The ironic thing, here's the weird thing, okay. I felt fatter when I became, when I was 14 stone than I did when I was 16 stone. Honestly, when I when I reached 14 stone back in about 2010 or 2009, 2010, I actually felt like I was going to pop. Seriously, I felt so overweight, so huge. And then by 2000 and... 15 or 16 I was 16 stone and I didn't feel slim I'll be honest I, there's no point that I feel oh I feel so skinny now no obviously not but I didn't I, I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was about to explode I mean in a bad way so it's weird isn't it I guess it's just perception how I was perceived. Yeah, we know what perception is. You haven't got to explain what the word means. All right. Okay. <laughs> Vin has just had his dinner. Have you had your num-nums, Vin? He's, he's on the lookout for something. So, the weird... Yeah, just... I'm now looking to do some martial arts. Like I told you, I talked about it yesterday. And I've kind of got my... I've got my eyes set on three different clubs. One's kickboxing, one's jiu-jitsu. There was another one, but I'm probably not going to go with that one because I don't know, just don't know the style at all. I've never even heard of it before. It's been around for like 50, 57 years, but I just don't, I don't know it. So it's a kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, both of which I've done before, but briefly, very briefly, both of them were brief. And judo. And so those there's those three clubs are in. I, I like the idea of doing boxing, but the problem with boxing is it, just around kids. And I don't. It. I want to do something where I can spar, where I can get a bit more. Um. And at the bo boxing, I'm not allowed to spar because I'm I'm old, you know. And these the amateur boxing clubs, it's, I don't I don't think anyone can really even argue with us uh, what I'm about to say. The amateur boxing, the uh, ABA clubs in the UK, they're only interested in kids, like to get them to be good enough to be, you know, to to. Um, participate in tournaments when I say kids I'm talking about anything like young young kids to get them to be really good so they're you know, maybe eventually go to the Olympics or something like that and then turn professional and then they probably move on to a, well, a professional gym because they won't be at the amateur gym anymore because that's for amateurs ABA amateur boxing association and even I mean I had two experiences I know this isn't supposed to be about boxing, but I'm going to talk about boxing anyway. <laughs> I'm going to talk. I love it. I love talking about stuff like this. You want me to talk about carrier bags? I mean, come on. How am I going to fill up a whole recording talking about reusable carrier bags? How? How? Yeah, I'll probably do it quite easily, but that's besides the point. I went to one, two, three, four, four boxing clubs in my lifetime. 
The first one was when I was at school, went along, it was in a different town, and I was obsessed with karate, but I also loved boxing. I kind of fallen in love with boxing because of the Hagler Hearns kind of period, you know, which was 84, I do believe. So I fell in love with that. I fell in love with boxing. I'd, I'd already been a fan of boxing. I was a big fan of Frank Bruno and Bam McGuigan and stuff like that. So, but I didn't get to see much of it. So I went to this boxing class when I was probably about 15. And I liked it, but it was a lot of hassle getting there. It was hassle getting back. So I had to get a bus there and then a bus back. And it was, or train there and train. It was like really, you know, I was a kid and it just wasn't, it wasn't easy to do. And I was, I still loved karate, you know, so I was doing that. And then the second time I went to a boxing club was about 1989, maybe in early 90. And it was in Stratford and I went to a boxing club there and it was, they look, I think if they had this gym, but I think they were potentially going to be closing down. And I was, what, I was 19 at the time. So I wasn't old. You know, I was still a teenager, so they didn't, they, they were, they were, they didn't like turn me away or anything. But they were uncertain about whether or not it would still be there. And I think I moved away from London shortly afterwards. So nothing came from that. And then I moved back to London in 1991, January. And probably early years, early 90s, I went into a really famous boxing gym. And I asked, you know, if I could train. I thought, I really thought it'd just be a case of when, I wasn't really asking permission, to be fair, just like, when can I train? How much is it? And what days is it and stuff? What time? But it was like, nope, too old. Too old, I'm 20 years old. What do you mean too old? Yeah, you're too old. We only want kids. I couldn't believe it. It was like a boxing, it was an amateur boxing club. It is a very famous, world famous boxing club. But regardless of that, how did they know they they didn't know that I might have I might have been quite good. I might have been rubbish, but you know, I might have had something there that they didn't realise just by looking at me. And that was disappointing and that put me off boxing. Right, like training as a boxer. Didn't put me off watching boxing, but I didn't like that. It left a bit of a hmm. Didn't mm, wasn't pleased with that. Being old, you know, too old. Bearing in mind that some of the Olympic champions are in their late twenties when they become a champion, or middle twenties. So you know, even I don't think Anthony Joshua became a boxer till he was about twenty, maybe nineteen. Some people don't turn, don't become, don't go into a boxing gym till they're in their twenties themselves. They may never, some of them go on to become world champions. Anyway, I'm not saying I would have gone on to be a world champion. I'm just saying, that's not what I'm saying. In my little imagination it is, but it's not really, it is what I'm saying. I could have been a world champion. I could have been an area champion. I could have, <laughs> I could have, comp I could have been a contender. So... And in the third box, the fourth boxing club I went to, that actually, it was the ABA again, but it was part of another gym. So they basically had their section that they rented out, but it was still the ABA in my town. And I went there, and they were lovely. But it was mainly kids again. 
there was there's a few adults but it it was just and I wasn't allowed to spar because I was too old uh, 36 I think is the cut off period legally apparently and I wanted to spar because that's one of the things I like most about uh, martial arts was the sparring because it's just fun but yeah in the end so I did that and I realised that they really I was almost like an invisible person there the the trainers occasionally would come they say hello to me uh, I'll tell me that I've lost weight and stuff so that you know stuff like that but they weren't they weren't looking at me like I was going to be of use to them they were looking at the little kids seeing the possibility of groom them groom them into a to become a future uh, amateur champion and ultimately maybe get into the Olympics because I guess that's the that's the highest goal you can have as an amateur or like the world games or the European but Olympics especially so I kind of it's not why I stopped going I just kept injuring myself I kept getting internal injuries which sounds bad but it was I kept pulling these muscles inside myself from punching and that so I'm not quite sure what happened there but in the end I stopped going I can't remember why I don't remember I wish I hadn't really because it, it'd be but then I did the taekwondo a couple of years later oh here's what I was going to say so the three there's four clubs there was a boxing club I could go back to potentially or go to but they've moved to their own premises and it is the ABA and I'm not sure if they're, they're open to adults going. But even if they are, I, I don't want to be the only adult. I want, I'd rather it be like 50-50 or at least 30% adults. You know, just so there's someone to spar, well, train with. Because, you know, I, we there's a school uh, close by and I went to the karate court club which was on a Tuesday night, I think. It's not there anymore. And when I first moved into here, it was like, like a couple of years after I moved in, went along, not one adult apart from the trainer, but there was a kid there that was bigger than me. But even though he's bigger than me, I'm talking like taller, much, much taller. He was good, like 6'3", and I'm probably about 6'1". So he was, it was weird though, because even though he was big, I knew he was, he was a kid. He was only like probably 14. And I, d I kind of didn't want to, just didn't feel right to be, because we were kind of a little bit of sparring, not proper sparring, but, and it just felt a little bit awkward getting beaten up by a 14 year old, <laughs> to be honest. He threw me all over the place. Honestly, he kept kicking me over. It's not fair. So I didn't go back there. And now just to, I wanted, to, I want to go somewhere, ideally where it's just adults, but most martial arts clubs don't have just adults. Some will have female only classes. See, I don't want to go to a men only class. That's never appealed to me. Uh, that kind of, um, what do they call it, segregation and stuff, I'm not really, it doesn't, it's not, not for me, it's nice, if you're going to meet someone, it's nice to meet men and women in those places, because sometimes it can be quite a nice social event, so I'll just get to know them a little bit, sort of, I don't know, it's the idea of going to a place that's just men, which you will get in boxing anyway, it's predominantly males, even the youngsters, but there's still a fair bit of girls now. You know, when I was young, it was all, all boys pretty much. I don't think girls were even allowed to compete or train because, you know, that was like 80 years ago when I was young. 
so the clubs that I'm thinking of doing, I'm thinking of, I've now got it like shortlisted and I'm starting to think that maybe next year I can do it. I'm still weight training, I'm still looking to kind of, you know, reduce my cholesterol and stuff and I'm going to be starting on the exercise bike at some point when I can bring myself to do it. So I might start in January, start going to one of these clubs. So there's, and I've got a neighbour who I see walking a dog and he goes to kickboxing. And I thought maybe joining that club. And you never know, I might even get a lift, get a lift home. That'd be handy. But that's not the reason to do it. But then I'm thinking, I don't know about the kicking. That's the one thing that kind of, that puts me off a little bit. And the other, that's why, otherwise I'd probably go back to Taekwondo. Well, that's the reason why, that was a weird noise, isn't it? It's made a weird, my, my, my mouth makes some strange noises. So, I felt a bit blocked up yesterday, a bit air. And I was sneezing earlier, so hopefully I'm alright, but it might just, the weather changes so quickly. so quickly you know what we should have in this country there's this big thing about oh there's too many people too many foreigners there should be some kind of uh, test to see if they can be part of the English community they they just they you know t- well if you want to find out if someone's English ask them about the weather and if you have a full-on conversation about the weather, then they're English. They're an English citizen. Don't matter where where they're from. If they talk, if you see someone in the street, say, oh, it's cold, isn't it? Yeah, you should. It's going to snow probably next week. No. Is it? Yeah. It's, it will be nice this afternoon. If you have that conversation with someone, that means they're English. Doesn't matter what accent they've got. Doesn't matter what what they look like. They're English. It's an Eng- <laughs> they are genetically English in their brain because that's what we do. We are born with an obsession with weather. So if you if you wait at any bus stop, I mean they I don't know if people really use the buses as much as they used to, but or in a waiting room, you know, we just you come in out of the cold. Or if you're in a queue outside waiting to get somewhere. The conversation about the weather. Guaranteed. With a complete stranger as well. And you can't do that about many subjects. You know, if this is, you've got a stranger at a bus stop. And you say, oh, it's cold, isn't it? Well, it's, you know, I, I remember I lent my gloves. In fact, I didn't leave. I, I gave my gloves to a young girl she was freezing she didn't even have a coat so I feel I let her I might let her wear my coat I can't remember but I let her she had to I let her put yeah no she got on the bus before me so she had the gloves I let her keep the gloves because it's just cold like why have you come out with without any well, she had clothes on, but she's like, why, why, wear gloves. That's what I'm trying to say, it's cold, wear gloves. Wear a hat, wear gloves, wear goggles. Wear, just keep warm. You know, I know it's not fashionable maybe to to be nice and cosy when you're waiting for a bus, but I prefer it. I don't want to be cold. Do you want to be cold? I don't want to be cold, No. So yeah, um, yeah, you can talk about the weather to a complete stranger. Oh, it's been a hot day today, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be hot. It's going to be the hottest day in the, in the whole history of the world tomorrow. It's going to be over nine thousand degrees. You can get away with that conversation. Talk about oh, is it, I think it's going to snow. Do you think it's going to snow? I don't know. Don't know. You think it's too cold to snow? How can it be too too cold to snow? Go to New York. It's like minus seventy, and it snows. How can 
how can it be too cold to snow? Go to the Antarctic. It snows there and it's like minus a thousand. How do you mean too cold to snow? Too warm to snow? Yeah. Not too cold to snow. It could be too cold to get to to get a suntan, you know, if there's no if it's a bit uh, So you can have those kind of conversations. But if someone's at a bus stop and you just sort of say, uh, I had a sausage last night for dinner. I had two sausages. I like sausages. Sometimes I have them with beans. On special occasions I have them in a roll. I try and fit two sausages in one roll. But they don't fit. I like a sausage roll as well as a sausage in a roll. Sometimes I actually put a sausage roll inside a bread roll. That doesn't always fit, but I squash it so it does fit. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll get a cheese roll, cheese and tomato, and I put a warm or hot sausage roll inside the cheese and tomato roll and squash it in and eat it. It doesn't fit, but it tastes nice. If you see the look on their face, they, they don't. This, they don't come back. And say, yeah, I like sausages as well. Yeah, sometimes I like to eat them when I'm, when I'm watching telly, or on the toilet. That's another thing. You can't talk about toilet habits when you're at the bus stop. I've been told <laughs> a few times. No, you can't talk about stuff like that. I remember my dad years ago. He was talking, it was at a dinner table. It was a Sunday dinner. I was visiting from London. And he was talking about his piles, like he did, his hemorrhoids. He just, I don't know why, he just liked to talk about them at the dinner table. Going into detail, you know, having to have an operation and just go like, we're eating. Right. And then I say to him, so who are you going to vote for, Dad? Because the election was coming up. He said, that's personal. That's private. It's like, so who you vote for is personal and private. But the insides of your, that's a true story. Anyway, so the four clubs, before I get on with the actual recording, is there is... I know people look oh dear Jason these Monday boring objects thing is seem like quite a good idea but when are you gonna actually talk about the subjects that you were talking about? Because I've been listening for six hours now and you haven't even mentioned carrier bags. I've been looking forward to this for years. <laughs> um yeah, the four the four clubs I've got it down to is oh itchy bump. Um, judo club, kickboxing club, um, or was it three? Kickboxing, judo, jujitsu. I think that's it. I've got it down to three. And then I'm thinking I'm really swaying towards the jujitsu. But this, the person who walks his dog, his dog, not my dog, I walk my dog, he goes to kickboxing. I know where he goes, he told me, but I didn't know until I went on there. His trainer is my friend. There's someone that I, I used to go to Taekwondo with. And me and this bloke that is his trainer, he's, we both started at the same time in 2011 in the Taekwondo. He'd already done kickboxing previous to that, so he was brilliant at kicking. 
it was better than the other. It was probably the best at kicking more than the people that were high graded taekwondo. And so we both went to the idea is we were both going to go through the whole thing all the way to black belt together. Yeah, you because know, we both did the gradings, and you know we did the first three, three or four gradings together, and then I stopped going because I feel I had to stop first of all because of my job. I had a job in insurance, which meant I was doing all kinds of weird hours. Now, if I could go back, what I would have done. I would have said, look, you know, I'll do whatever as you want, but I do need Tuesday and Thursday evening off. Because I do Taekwondo. And that if I'd have just done that, it would have, it just would have changed my life. I, I would have, I know it's so easy, isn't it? Like, well, if only, if only, if, 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 if what. But, something and back then I was I was able to do it I was physically able to do it and then I had a break and when I went back the maybe sitting down for you know a year or whatever back on the computer again like doing work in an office didn't really help my back so much made my back worse possibly and then I tried to go back and it just, yeah. I ended up having just, just having to leave. So I'm probably, I feel a little bit embarrassed about going back there. But anyway, he went on to get his black belt. I think he might have even got his second band, Dan Black Belt. And now he's teaching, I don't know if he teaches Taekwondo somewhere else, but he teaches kickboxing at this place. So it's weird, just really weird the way kind of um, things move around. That could have been me. The other places are Jeet Kune Do, not Jeet Kune Do, uh, Jiu Jitsu, and it's an actual academy. So I'm thinking, okay. And I talked about it the other day or yesterday as a beginning eve, beginner's evening course for a month. So I might book that up in January and go go ahead and go to there and the plan is to become black belt ideally do that like at the same time as my university course so by the end by the time i'm 60 <laughs> oh it still sounds ridiculous by the time i'm 60 i will have my second degree and my a first i'll have a first in my second degree i'm Guarantee. I mean, that's my main goal. It's not even to complete it. It's not about getting a second degree. It's about getting a first, the highest mark that I can get. I mean, some would argue that I got the highest mark that I could get last time, but I didn't because it was capped. Because I put in, I put in the, the. It was in late. I handed in the things late, even though I got an extension. I was still late which meant they were capped at 40% when I was getting like 66, 70%. So I still wouldn't have got a first, but I would have got a second. Or 2-2 two, two or what, I don't know, 2-1 or whatever it is. But I want to get a, one, a first, so that's the thing. And if I can get my black belt around the same time, how cool would that be? be 60 years it's only six years away i'll be super fit i mean of course there won't be any sexier than i'm now that's not possible but i'll be super fit <laughs> i'll probably i don't know if I, I might weigh less if i'm exercising regularly technically i'm exercising now but it's more muscle than cardio so i can feel it the weird weird thing about it is when doing weight training every day you start to get to feel feel the the like the muscles moving or even just even in my legs I can just I can tense the muscles in my legs 
it just becomes I mean they're always always there but just they're more tensible uh, when they're being trained every day so I don't do intense training by the way you know, like any any experts in fitness you shouldn't train your legs every day you shouldn't train your biceps every day well I just do four four lots of weights four times a day I do four 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 like exercises and so yeah every time before taking the little one out I uh, do some weights and the repetition is getting more as well because it's I guess maybe I'm getting stronger or I'm just getting used to the weight but yeah it's pretty cool so I'll continue doing that for the for the rest of this year and perhaps try and get on the exercise bike and then when I next year I will have a perhaps be a bit more fitter and able to start doing like a new martial art so in judo is the other one that i'm thinking about because kickboxing is cool but i want to i do love boxing but i'd rather i want to get a black belt so it kind of breaks it down to jujitsu and judo neither of which i have to worry, worry too much about kicking um, so, and there's, there's some similarities between judo and jiu-jitsu. And the, the thing I used to have with judo is, because I was always so little when I was at school, and I know judo is supposed to be there for, uh, you know, you should be able to take on larger opponents and that, but there's weight categories for a reason. And if I'd have gone to judo as a kid, I would have been paired up with probably people three, three, four years younger than me. Because I was so little. I really wasn't big at all. And that would have been, well, at least two years younger than me. Yeah, the kids two years younger than me were usually as big as I was, if not bigger. So I would have, I'm not talking about height necessarily, just I was just little. I left school I was eight and a half stone when I was 15 16 eight and a half stone gradually it went up <laughs> obviously it went up so I ended up being double that but yeah I didn't really feel very confident about doing judo I wish I had done it now because it was on the other nights so Monday and Wednesday was judo at the same place I think that I did that I did uh, karate I think so judo Monday, Wednesday karate Tuesday, Thursday if I'd have done all, both of them it you know I don't know it would have just been fun ultimately so that's where I'm looking at now maybe judo would have been more gentle I know it's not gentle but maybe more gentle as far as on my body I mean rather than being a gentle sport which it might be more yeah less shocking <laughs> but then there's throwing I'll be thrown around all right I'm going to talk about okay carrier bags reusable carrier bags yeah I've used them before right so yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna I think January January will be will be when I'll start that so I've got it down to judo. So what I might do, I'll probably wait until January and I'll visit both the clubs to see what I think. I might go to kickboxing just to say hello to my friend. I haven't seen him for years. And then I, it's weird because I see a picture of him on the thing. He just looks the same. It don't look any different looks exactly the same and it's weird just one of these people that doesn't age but then I'm thinking I look at some of the pictures on the 
like the karate groups and instantly it's all kids so like I'm not I don't want to go there there's like literally no adults in the picture doesn't mean there's no adults that go to the club but there's none in the picture so I thought no but then thinking back when I did karate at school yeah there's a lot of young people like teenagers and stuff but there was adults as well it was I'd it, yeah I'd say probably maybe not a 50-50 but possibly f maybe actually more adults than kids or teenagers that were like 17, 18 but that to me that was an adult because I was young and I was two foot tall so yeah oh well I might be becoming a bit obsessed with this I think I might be yeah. God you imagine what it would be like if I start going back and start doing some kind of martial art I'd just be talking about it all the time I'll try not to what was that SoundCloud is changing their terms and conditions no 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 SoundCloud your oh, where is it I literally just see it and now it's gone SoundCloud primary S okay social sound it was there right in front of me now it's just disappeared so SoundCloud right okay updates nope promotions nope that's very weird it literally was right in front of me oh no I found it we're updating our terms and conditions uh, 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 uh. okay it's nothing interesting after all that so, I'm just trying to think when it comes to, right, when it comes to, um, what you want, Vin? Oh, now you're giving me hassle. Just calm down. Calm down, baby. See, I've, I do have a fair bit about, yeah, carrier bags. I don't know what it's like where you live. They're like gold dust. You know, there was, there was a time when you just you just get carrier bags. You go you go into a shop and you'd buy one grain of rice and it'd offer you a carrier bag. Like it'd give you like six carrier bags for one grain of rice. It's like they just chuck them at you. It's like you know you go to an ice cream vendor, you, you know, ice cream van. You get an ice cream. Do you want a carrier bag with that? No, I'm going to eat it now. No, go and have a carrier bag. It really. It's, it was pushed upon you, like, and you never charged, they never charged, nothing, no no amount of money, just, I guess you probably know what never getting charged means, but it was standard stuff, you get a carrier bag, do you want to, in fact, it was never do you want a carrier bag, they just automatically put it into a carrier bag for you going back you know it's not that long ago really it might be but it's not but it probably is and things started to change and I think they actually put it into law in this country that there was a tax or that, that, that shops had to charge for carrier bags which they did, like five pence. I think it started off at five pence and went up to ten pence, something like that. And we started to get encouraged to bring our own carrier bag. Well, that's okay if you're planning to go shopping, but what if you go out? You're just out. And... As a shopkeeper, if I was a shopkeeper, regardless of what I sold, I'd be quite happy to get random customers just popping in. 
you know, passers by looking in a window and thinking, Ooh, I want to buy some feathers and then coming in to my feather shop. But in that situation, the customer is not necessarily prepared to carry the feathers home in a bag. And let's face it, if you don't have them in a bag, they'll just float off. So, it's, I don't, I, I, I think it's probably cost the retail industry a fair bit by banning carrier bags. Not back, because they, they, a lot of time, they actually banned them now in some places. But by making it very, very difficult. See, when I moved here, why are you messing? Just, can you lay down and calm down, please, Vinny? Can you calm down, please, darling? Can you calm down? Yeah? Calm down. Just because I'm, he wants to play now. Now that I'm recording, even though he's been good for an hour, I, I think it's been about an hour I've been talking. Wow. Uh, just because he's been good for the last 10 minutes while I've been talking, now he's decided to, uh, try and have a fight with me he just gets bored it must imagine how much, how boring it is to live with me i mean you think about it people listen to me to get bored to fall asleep imagine listening to me all day long which he has to he can't escape <laughs> I'm not sure when the old carrier bag thing started. But you know what? I know it's probably a bit, perhaps a bit too political. Um, but I can honestly tell you, right? You know, going about, oh, there's, a, there's an island in the middle of the ocean of carrier bags the size of a whole country or something like that, yeah? I've never ever in my life chucked a carrier bag into the sea. And I'm betting that everyone listening to this can probably say the same thing. Probably not as eloquently and such a sophisticated voice as, <laughs> as I did. Who of us have ever got into, I mean, have you ever rowed a boat into the sea just to dump a carrier bag? No, I'm guessing. And if you have, I would wonder what was in that carrier bag. <laughs> Hand yourself in to the police. I just wonder. So, I never have done that. So, to blame the population who use carrier bags for what the, um, the dust, you know, the, the refuge collectors have done... Because it's the refuge, isn't it? The people that collected the rubbish and then chucked that rubbish, dumped it into the sea. It wasn't me or you that did that. It was the government that did that or the government who contracted someone that did that. So it wasn't us. You know, I don't go into the ferry and and like, you know, to get, go to France carrying a big backpack full of plastic to just chuck over the side. Although that is not a bad idea, is it? Mind you, I suppose... Isn't it weird, though? Because if there's a... there's, Will you calm down, please, Vinny? Please, mate. Calm down. Don't make me get angry with you. Don't make me get angry. Angry. <laughs> <laughs> you know whenever there's a, a boat issue like a ship that has an issue you know where lifeboats are needed never happens near that big island of plastic does it because that would be quite handy wouldn't it if they had a little remote control underneath it and they could just like manoeuvre it to where it's needed uh, so 
I've never chucked anything in the sea. I don't think. Maybe I chucked some stuff off the pier. Maybe an action man once. But it was my brother's and he deserved it. <laughs> no, I can't remember. But I don't think, I'm not really a, a sea person anyway, but I'd never chuck something in the ocean. Just, and I don't think many people would. So, to blame the general public for what the government has done doesn't seem very fair. And also the fact that we will be in, I mean, it's probably, we will be in having the plastic carry bags pushed on us. I didn't always want to carry a bag. Sometimes I'd come home and I'd, I'd have like five carrier bags and there'd be nothing in them. People just handed me carrier bags. Like, I don't want it. I'll go and take a carrier bag. They're free. Yeah, but I don't want a carrier bag. It don't matter. It's not like they're going to be chucked in the ocean or anything, is it? I said, what? He said, no, 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 never mind. So, yeah, that's kind of how it used to be. And then, because there used to be a thing where, seriously, mate, just calm down, please. He's, he's getting all hyperactive now. Right. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. That's it. Good boy. I know what he wants. I kind of know what he wants. He wants to cuddle, don't you? Like, I've got him now. And he's happy now. Yeah, I've got, basically, I've got him. He's on his back, and I've got my arms over him. I'm not holding him down. I'm just, like, cuddling him. And we did this the other day, and he was like this for about an hour. You were happy, weren't you? Just stroking his tummy. It's very comfortable for him. And I think that's why he was climbing over me, because he wanted me to do it again. Because normally he won't let me pick him up and do this. But he was in a mood. To, he obviously, he's in a mood to do it today. And he's just laying there. And I can feel his heart rate just slowing down. So he feels very calm. He likes being cuddled, and it's a proper cuddle. So I've got my arms around him. I've got one one underneath his left arm. Like my hand around his uh, left hand or whatever. His right arm is resting on my right arm. And my my hand is... so, And it's like my arm's reaching over his chest. And my left hand is just rubbing his belly and his chest. And he's now got his face to the right just resting on my like on my shoulder kind of area he's so calm this is what he wanted so I didn't realise this he's, he wants the affection this is what I believe he wants the affection he wants cuddles like this this kind of cuddles, you know, when I'm actually holding him and cuddling him. He wants that, but he doesn't, at the same, the same time, he doesn't want it. it. He does, but he's kind of, if I go to pick him up and do that, he'll like, tell me to go away. And But today, for some reason, he's got his eyes closed now. Today, I'm thinking this might be his new thing. Because it took ages before he started cuddling up to me to the side of me on a settee. And I'd stroke him. To start with, I'd be stroking his back and he'd get off every any time I touched him. Now, I can have my arm on him, my hand on him the whole time. For like two hours or an hour and a half, whatever. And he just, he's happy. And it went from every now and then to multiple times a day now he'll do it and this lying on his back is something that's new but he's now done it twice in two days or three days twice in three days so I'm thinking this might be his new thing and 
he's really calm. I can feel his heartbeat. It slowed down so much compared to what it was. He loves having his belly stroked and his chest and just having that cuddle. It feels, I like it as well, it feels nice. And the weird thing about it, because I thought, if I did this, because I was watching, um, I think I was watching telly last time he did this. Or oh, maybe a YouTube video or something. And I thought, well, if I take my hand off his belly and or stop stroking him, he'll suddenly like, I'll get, he'll get off me or, you know. And I'm like, am I holding him down or not? I know I'm not holding him down because he's laying there by choice. So I took, I took my hand off and I played around with the remote control and as I am now, I've got my left hand off and he's still lying here. So he's choosing, he's got his eyes closed, I think he's falling asleep. So he's choosing to be here and I kind of feel that we're, even though I've had him for getting on to two years now in, in December, It'll be two years. It's almost like we're bonding a little bit more. You know? Like getting closer. And it's nice. I don't know, I like it. So, this is what we're doing anyway. So he's he's asleep. He's happy now. Maybe that's what he was doing. He was just trying to, like, wrestle me and kind of have a play fight in the hope that I'll cuddle him. I don't know, it's really hard to try and figure him out. But I, I can't figure humans out. How am I going to figure a dog out? Never met a human being that I understood. Probably never going to understand a doggy either. It's just taken my whole life to try and figure myself out and I'm probably 2% there. <laughs> if that Amen You're such a good boy Yes you are He's so calm So relaxed So yeah The the old Carrier bags Is I always find them quite Handy See, you used to get these flimsy bags. So, you know, the ones that are just absolutely ridiculous. When they split. And I've had that happen a few times over the years. Where I've gone to the petrol station and they've tried to, you know, I've maybe got two, two big bottles of milk box of cereal maybe and, and they've just put it all into like one little bag that you wouldn't well you wouldn't use it really for anything and feel safe you know you definitely use it, wouldn't use it as a hammock which is probably a silly thing to say but it's 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 like a, like a parrot's condom, but that's even weirder thing to say. It's just really, they're really rubbish bags. Literally, I mean, they probably should be used for rubbish, but it's something that you could use for tea bags, probably. You know, for for used tea bags. Put them in there and then eventually chuck them out. Or put them onto the compost heap if you've got a compost heap. But I don't have a compost heap, but I probably would if I did. I probably would put the tea bags in a compost heap because that's quite a good place to put tea bags, isn't it? I think, if I'm right, I do believe. Yeah. Oh, I had a one of my landladies from years ago when I was at university. They had a compost heap at the bottom of the garden. Insisted on me putting food there. I said, "Yeah, but I want to eat it." They said, no, put it on the compost heap. But it's only just cooked. No, put it on the, you know, it's like arguments. 
But what amazed me, what amazed me is how hot rubbish becomes. Like naturally, without any external heat. It heats up. It's weird. Weird, weird, weird. It's like, how? How does it, how? I mean, I'm surprised that when we've eaten, if we haven't had a poo after like four or five hours, I'm surprised smoke doesn't start coming out of our ears. <laughs> a bit weird. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just trying to think. We used to have, when I was living with the family, you know, as a kid, we had a carrier bag, carrier bag. So there was a bag, which was, I think it was underneath the sink that had all the other carrier bags. And I think that was kind of a standard thing. It was one of those standard things that everyone had. So, because there'd be so many carrier bags. And I used to use a carrier bag. I mean... I was quite well, well, not well known, but I was known a pung, a pung, known among people I knew that I used to carry stuff in a Sainsbury's carrier bag. In fact, I got a friend who, was it, she got her wedding photos out because they took a wedding, they, they got married and then walked down to the beach and took the wedding photos on the beach. And I was the only one with a carrier bag, holding a carrier bag in the wedding photos. She found it funny. I just, what was I going to do? After that, actually, I think I might have got myself an actual bag, like a satchel or something. But they're a bit cumbersome. I mean, I had a satchel that was so big. There wasn't any room inside for anything. It just the 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 size of the satchel just seemed to take up all the room. Very weird. I actually had a briefcase. Blimey, I still got it. When I was counselling, like actually doing proper counselling as a counsellor, that is, I had a briefcase and I used to <laughs> walk around with it. <laughs> oh dear, but. We were told we had to keep our documents under lock and key. So that's what I did. I kept them in a briefcase, a locked briefcase. And you're right, I did feel important. I felt so important. I felt like I worked in the city. Ooh. I think character carry bags are pretty cool especially the I don't know when, when did they start doing bags for life because I misunderstood the concept of bags for life I thought when they gave you a bag it had to last for life and I couldn't understand why it wasn't lasting because after a few months they would get holes in them and it'd wear out and then I go back and buy another one and I remember the lady in Sainsbury's, she said to me, why do you keep buying new bags? Because this is, you know, how to pay for them. And she said, I said, what do you mean? She said, well, where's the bags you get? I said, I chucked them away because they had holes in them. She said, well, you could bring them in. I said, well, you're going to mend the holes. You're going to darn them. We laughed. She said, no, you just get a new one. That's what I've done. I've just got a new one. She said, no, we'll, we'll give it to you for free. Huh? You give it to me for free. So you're telling me, let me get this right. So I paid £10, not £10, 10 pence for this carry bag. And literally, I never have to pay another 10 pence ever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. She said, yeah. Well, unless you want more than one bag. 
So I thought, well, I've got loads of bags at home that got holes in them. Went back the next week. She said, that's from a different supermarket. We can't swap that one. I said, oh, come on. She said, no, that's from Tesco's. This is Sainsbury's. We're not going to give you a Sainsbury's bag to replace the Tesco bag, are we? It's not a bag for life. It, we're not got, you know, we're not all working in all together. But then I thought, you know, you're right. Sorry. God, he, I think he might be on a dream then. All right, mate. All right, darling. The thing is, what if you could have sell a carrier bag? Sell a carrier bag. But don't put your logo. Don't expect me to advertise all the way home. I mean, think about it. Sainsbury's, I even advertised at a wedding for them. They didn't pay me anything. I paid them 10 pence. I pay, <laughs> I, I paid to advertise them to the 100 people or whatever that went to the wedding. Or 200, I don't know, there's quite a few people there. So, oh, blimey, they're the good old days. I've lost contact with so many people over the years. It never used to really bother me. It still doesn't hugely bother me, but... So many people I've been close to and then just don't see them anymore and just... Oh, well. Like, really close. Strange. I guess I don't really get attached. Hmm. Anyway, carrier bags. Carrier bags. Carrier bags. I tell you the carrier bags I do like. And these are the refu the refusable ones, reusable ones. But these are these are fifty pence. I think they're a pound now. You can pay up to two pound fifty. But these have got, these are sturdy, sturdy, made of material, some of them. The £2.50 ones are made of material. But these other ones are kind of heavy-duty plastic, but with a material kind of handle. Or they might have plastic handle, but it's just sturdier. And you can pay like 50 pence for them. But if you pay, if you're happy to pay like a couple of pound, you can get what. Well, not only are they much bigger, but they can last for a long time. So I've got a couple of those in the cupboard. Yeah. So the thing that I've noticed over the years that has made it difficult that I've not been. It's one of those advancements that I've not, I've not done cartwheels over. <sighs> Deliveries. Now, when I first moved here, bearing in mind two two kind of things happened. Firstly, my lower back was really starting to become a bit of a problem, so bending over really was it still is an issue. Um, the other thing is I, I live so far away from anything. No supermarkets would been about, I don't know, six to ten miles or something. So I needed to start getting deliveries, which is what I did. Back then, nine years ago, be ten years in April, all the deliveries, all the supermarkets delivered with bags. So I'd order online. They would deliver the stuff. And it would be easy because all the stuff would be in bags. I don't know why I'm just saying all the stuff's in bags. Just repeating it. But it was easy. Uh, easy. Ugh. Now. 
and they did they started doing this a few years ago everything just gets no no carrier bags can't even pay to have it delivered in carrier bags which means that if you've got lots of items that would normally be in one bag so you might have like 15 items or 10 small items in one bag that's one lift that's one bend now it's well if you use both hands it's maybe 5 bends or 10 bends and instead of just moving the bags out of the so I used to do it like have the the crates would be just in front of my front door I'd stand in in the front door like inside and I'd just take the bags out and put them in the hallway now because I have to if this is if I get deliveries like this which I haven't done for quite a while I have to take they, they still put the, the the crates right in front of the front door before ringing the doorbell so I go outside the front door I have to push the crates away from my front door because I then have to well, I need to put all the, the contents of the crates into reusable carrier bags that I've got saved here and they watch while I do it and it's probably a bit boring for them because I can't hurry I try and move as fast as possible but it, yeah it's it's just a little bit problematic it's the bending that's the thing like the constant bend 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 I'm not really much of a bender these days it's just it hurts too much it's just I end up getting sore and I yeah just uh, yeah I mean there's some things now don't even come with plastic or any kind of packaging like vegetables and fruit and who knows I mean these these baskets or whatever they they call them, crates they're duh. put it this way if you dropped something out of your mouth let's say you're talking and it fell out your mouth and it fell onto one of these crates you wouldn't pick it up and put it back in your mouth that's all I'm saying I'm guessing and then there was a time when I could walk into town well not walk into town go into town I'd have to I could get a delivery I still can do this if I, if I wanted to do this get a delivery so I could buy all my stuff in Iceland put it into bags they would then put it into crates and they would deliver it to me so it would get delivered in bags but having to go all the way into town seems to me to defeat the object of a delivery I mean personally I think a delivery is something that you don't have to go out for <laughs> call me old fashioned yeah so it's changed changed quite a lot nowadays I I've still got carrier bags got reusable carrier bags I've got some from from the petrol station although I did try and uh, change a Sainsbury one for for one of theirs they, they weren't having it but they do bags for life I think it's 10 pence still maybe 15 pence I don't know because I don't want to yeah I'll try and take my own I'll try and take a carry bag with me which is it's alright I don't mind but sometimes I forget sometimes I don't intend to buy much I might just go to maybe buy a paper or maybe just go and buy a bottle of water or some milk 
and a little one of those little crappy bags is fine but then I might get all excited because there's a special offer on rice or popcorn or you know, I don't know tampons or something and I'm like oh I've got to get them it's like five for the price of three so you know I've got no choice but to buy them and then I need I need a bag like a carrier bag I mean, yeah, I could just pour them all into the smaller bag. That probably would, yeah, it'd probably be all right. But didn't really want to do that. Although I have done that in the past. I used to do that in Saint, it's Saints in Iceland. Not Iceland. Where did, where was I used to do that? I used to buy... I can't remember. That's gone out of my head. I'd buy something. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of the of the pet shop. So I'd go in there because they didn't have bags big enough to fit the box of dog food. Like these are sach sachets. There'd be 48 sachets. So what I'd do is I'd empty the sachets into a bag or two bags, carrier bags, and ask them if they could take the box. And they would. So that that's probably, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. But I just have a memory of doing that with Coke as well. Like emptying the box into bags. But where would I do that? Maybe Sainsbury's. Maybe I'd do that in Sainsbury's. Because the boxes didn't always fit very well into the bag. But you can put in... Oh... I have a vague memory of that. But I haven't bought anything in the supermarket for absolute yonks and yonks and yonks. So I'm not even sure. And I tell you what, it's weird. This little one here, he moves his head from left to right. Like every now and then he moves it to the right. That's what I do. So if I'm if I'm just on this chair with my head against the, the rest, you know, the headrest, and I'm listening to some music with my eyes closed. I move over, I go to my right and to my left, and I just do that. It just naturally is what I do. And he does the same thing. So I think I might have copied from him. Oh. His heart's going a little bit, so I think he's dreaming about something. He just wake, He just woke up. Now he's gone back to sleep again. The thing is, he knows oh, his heart's slowing down now. That's it, nice and slow. Nice and calm. Good boy. Nice and calm. He's a funny little thing. I can't believe he's just... How long has he been like this now for? A good... 10, 15, 20 minutes. It's not, I like it. I feel closer to him when he's like this. Because he's so, I guess he's vulnerable. I mean, he should be able to be vulnerable with me, shouldn't he? Let's face it. But he's got his back, he's lying on his back, his belly's open, and he's just relaxed, falling asleep. Yeah. That he's quite a happy little boy right now. I miss the carrier bags though. There were times when I had too many. There were times in the past when I had so many I had to chuck them out. That's a long time ago. But I found, I mean there's been times when I've used carrier bags to move my book collection which meant I needed like a lot of carrier bags because I was well not always but quite often in the past I've had a lot of books I think the most I had was about a thousand books a few years back but now I kind of got rid of a lot of those books because of where I was living it was just too small 
I moved from a fairly big room to a very, very small room. So I gave away the philosophy books, I gave away the Buddhist books, I gave away... Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the ones I gave away. Maybe sort of the poetry and the art of gingerbread making. It's things like that. So I just, so I ended up with just the kind of psychological counselling, hypnosis, therapy kind of books when I was doing the degree. And then in the end, I ended up losing all of them at one point. About 2000 and... 2014, I think it was. 2013, 2014. Two, yeah, something like that. So I've been sort of... For a while I was building, rebuilding the collection. A couple of years ago I got quite a few hypnosis ones but coming now over the next year anyway for the next six years I've decided I'm going to get a bookcase and it's going to be over there I realise you can't see where I'm pointing but it's over there there's a gap so I'm going to put a bookcase there or the other over there somewhere but it's going to be just the psychology books so what I'll get for the first year, I'll get a, group, a bunch of um, child psychology, developmental books, uh, anything that kind of accompanies the first year of training. And then I'll do the same for each subsequent year. So I'll probably have quite a nice little book collection. I mean, even if I've only get like maybe 20 books a year. Still, it's 120 books at the end of the six years, isn't it? It's over 42 books. <laughs> oh, I entertain myself with my silly ways. I'm trying to think what other exciting stories I have with reusable carrier bags. I think they're useful. I like the strong ones though. Because the little plastic feeble ones are just... It's like you've got a choice of two type of bags. You've got the ones that are useless and the ones that are pretty good. There's no in between. I mean, the ones that they do in the supermarket at the, like the the petrol station rather is about the same in fact it's probably less yeah they're 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 less good than what you get in a takeaway a takeaway food place so if you buy like a kebab or if you buy a chinese takeaway or fish and chips you probably get a better carrier bag there than you do in a petrol station or in a a convenience store. So yeah, I prefer like a, a bag for life. And I don't I'll pay every time I'm not bothered. Because I've got a few now. There's not a lot. I seem to be getting through them and I had a tendency of letting people have them if someone didn't have a bag or like, you can have one, I've got plenty. And then I did that with the toilet roll once and then I ran out of toilet roll. I've run out of tea bags. I've got no tea bags. I don't know why I had to say that two different ways. Tea bags I do not have. Come on, baby. You have any? I think he's... Uh, I didn't realise that he sleeps with his eyes open sometimes. So, I mean, he does have his eyes closed when he sleeps, but sometimes he will have them open 
and he can't see me. Doesn't know I'm there. You know, I'll be doing a little dance and nothing. Dressed up as a clown and sung a song. I thought things were going really well, but no, he's still asleep. Then other times he's got his eyes closed and he's still awake. I just don't know where I am with him. I don't know where I am. Can't believe how cute he's been tonight though. It's just weird. He's so cute the way he's laying here with me. It's he's never done this while I've made a recording before. He's he's laid to the side of me. Oh he's awake. He's awake. So I just moved my hand and he looked where my hand was, so he's awake. He's just enjoying lying there. Wow. Isn't that weird? So he's wide awake, but he's just happy just to be happy just to be lying there. Isn't that weird. I thought he was so out of it that he, he'd forgotten that he was where he was. But he's actually choosing to continue to lie here. I don't know, it might sound weird, and I guess it's nothing, it's not really connected to reusable carrier bags. However, it just feels nice. It feels really, I feel close to him, closer to him than, and it's nice that he cuddles up to me now anyway, but this is... It's like a different level, it's just, yeah, it's really nice. You like it as well, don't you? You must do. He wouldn't be doing it if he did want to. He doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do, ever. And there's nothing stopping him from just turning over and getting off, which he probably will at some point. Is that way? You lie there on your tummy stroke, don't you? In your chest. Hey? You're a little baby, aren't you? So he's had his, got some fresh water, he's had his evening meal, and now he's having a nice little nap. Nice little cuddle with daddy. So I think you're you're doing all right, aren't you? Hmm? Do you love you, Vin? Yes, I do. I love you, love you. I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, 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 yes. Bless him. Today has been one of those days where we just try to avoid the rain. This morning I went, had to go to the petrol station. It was sunny. I thought, oh, well, I come out with my with my raincoat on, and it was sunny and warm. When I left the petrol station, it was raining. I was like, what? So it got a little bit wet, not like hugely wet. I mean, it was coming down. You want to get up? Go on in. Get up then. Good boy. See, I knew eventually he'd want to get up. Good boy, yes you are. And he, it was raining like torrential at four in the morning. Like really coming down. Then it came down really hard at least twice during the day. And each time it comes down, it brightens up shortly afterwards. It hasn't rained for a few hours, so if it, I, I don't want to take him out in it if it rains, but I will have to take him out so before he goes to bed. Always need to take him out before going to bed because unless I just took him out. So if I take him out, let's say, let's say if I took him out at nine o'clock, I go to bed at ten, then I could probably get away with it. 
just you know especially if he's had his two poos for the day that's what he normally does and I could probably get away with just take you know I mean just going to bed but I think I've said the word O-U-T too many times don't I do you want a treat? Do you want a treat? Alright, I'll give you a treat. Uh. So this was not a very productive recording when it comes to the actual subject matter. <laughs> but um I don't know, I just, I just I'm not. I, I guess this is just like a norm. This is how it's going to be. Uh, maybe maybe I shouldn't read too much into it. To be fair, it's just a recording, isn't it? Perhaps I didn't have quite as much to say about carrier bags as I thought. Who, who'd have thunk that? Eh? Who'd have? You'd imagine after. 33 years I'd, I'd have a, a lot of experience of carrier bags but it seems I don't all I'd say is I've used them for years and I find them ha handy very handy very handy my favourite carrier bags are the probably oh, the carrier bags that I get from the books in the West End, London. So, whether it's books, etc., whether it's foils, just those bags, cause I knew what was in them. Books. And I love books. <sighs> oh, yeah. Love buying books. Now, Amazon, it's not the same. It's really not. It's, it's, there's not even 1% of the enjoyment of actually going into the bookshop and well, like how I used to like it because um, there were big stores in London like we, we've got a bookshop here but it's in town and it's it's not tiny but it's not big and if one you know th this if one person is kind of standing at a shelf, you can't get near the shelf. It's hard to get behind them. I don't, why would I want to get behind them? I'm just saying to get through to the next shelf. In London, the bookshops are huge. So there's, there's room. And if someone's, let's say, at the psychology department looking, looking at the psychology books, I can walk up three or four bookcases and still be in the psychology department that's one of the good things about the big bookshops is the choice I, I used to love it I used to go there when I was working at Churchill I'd go up there on a yeah I'm talking about pre 2003 i will go up to London on a Saturday, maybe a Sunday. Maybe, but I'd go up there and I'd come back with like 250 pounds worth of books. And some of the books were like 20, 30 quid each. Forty pound, it like you know, and I just absolutely buzzing. It wouldn't be every week or every month. I mean, this is this this was not like a regular thing. But I remember once I did do that, and it was I had all these bags that were very heavy. But I spent I can't believe I spent that much money on books. But then I worked it out, and it's not that many books. It's, you know, it's like 10 books at 30 quid or something. No, less than that, isn't it? 
So yeah, there's a few books at nine ninety nine. Some were seventeen pound, but I think one of them was like fifty quid. Another one was like thirty seven, and just yeah, it just added up to way too much to spend on books. But oh man, I've never replaced them either. I replaced one of them, but some of those books I got, they were they weren't even in print anymore. They they were available to buy, but they weren't in you know weren't being printed. So the only way to get them is if like second hand now. But bearing in mind this is over twenty years ago. I have to get them on Amazon or some bookseller second hand, or eBay potentially. I bought I bought uh, hypnosis books on eBay. Although I'm not I'm not so much into hypnosis like I used to be. I guess really. I mean, I don't know. What are you doing? I'm just stroking you. Oh, you ain't gotta be narky to me. I'm just stroking you, Vinny. I'm just giving you a nice little stroke. That's all. That's all. So that's it for me. Um, I might not have talked as much about carry bags as we all would have loved. <laughs> but. What? Oh, Vinny's come to life. I wonder how long he was lying there for. Cuddling me. It was lovely. I really enjoyed that, Vinny. I did. I really enjoyed it. You hugging me. Or me hugging you. It was lovely. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. It was. In fact, it's probably the hi- one of the highlights of the year so far. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes. So I'm going to go. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. And I will be back here again tomorrow. Lots of love. I think tomorrow is Trivia Tuesday, if I do believe. Whether or not I actually talk about anything trivial. Actually, you could say all my recordings are trivial, can you really? Ooh. So, take care. Lots of love. Bye.